Okay, uh, welcome back again. So uh, we are going to uh, start uh, our, our discussion again from the uh, of the nucleophilic addition to carbonyl uh, compounds of ketones and aldehydes. Okay, when we left, I believe we were discussing the uh, addition of phosphorus helix to give a uh, carbon carbon double bond. So let us. Uh, Continue with that. Okay, so you have the uh, phosphorus helix uh, reacting with the carbonyl of a ketone to give you the carbon carbon double bond. You see, essentially, what are we doing here? We are replacing the carbon oxygen double bond with a carbon carbon double bond. And also, then ask you, how do we make the helix? Okay, helix formation. If you want to, if you start with Triphenylphosphine. And you take either a primary alkylate or a secondary alkylate. This would be an SN2 type reaction. Okay, the phosphorus will display the the living group in the alkylating agent. So we say this is an SN2 reaction, and you obtain this here. Let's make this a little bit more. Okay, so you obtain that product right there. Of course, the phosphorus will have a positive charge. The bromide has been displaced. <coughs> and then you take this here, butyl lithium. Okay, then uh, subsequently, what you are going to see me do is simply write this butyl lithium. Okay, that's how we're going to use that. So we don't need to write all these uh, <coughs> carbon uh, chain right here. What happens, the butyl lithium will be acting as a base. Because the carbon lithium bond is so polarized, that carbon will be acting as a base. That's all of the electrons. So now it comes in here. Put this proton away from this carbon here. And that is how you form your phosphorus helix.
So I will simply represent the uh, benzene as pH. And of course, in in your book, you will see that the yield is also represented as its resonance average. Okay, so this will be these are two resonance structures of the yield. So this is how you make the yield. So therefore, in essence, if we want to do this, all we have to do is simply do this. Very often you will see in your book, we simply just do this right here. Do this here. Use this as our alkylating agent. Step one, and then step two, you have butyl lithium, and then you are now have okay. And of course, you know that this also could be written in terms of its resonance structure. Okay. And now you could then use the uh, phosphorus yield the way you want it, for example, I could react that with this here. It's an aldehyde. And what do I do? And now I will now get a carbon, carbon double bond between this carbon and this carbon right here. Okay, so the uh, the Wittig reagent is a very important reagent indeed. So we very often refer to the phosphorus yield as a Wittig reagent. Very important. Okay, number five. <coughs> that was number four. Uh, relative to nucleophilic addition reaction. Number five. Yes. Go back. Okay. Just a minute. I want to be sure that I am still recording here. Okay. Okay. So go back. Okay. Okay, number five addition of primary amine to give it means. Okay, let's take the cyclohexanol again. Or maybe just let's do something different. Let's take this here. This molecule here is called acetophenone. 
Okay, so if we take acetophenone and you take a primary amine, a primary amine is that in which you have <coughs> the nitrogen is attached to only one carbon atom and that nitrogen is also attached to two hydrogen atoms. So we say this is a primary amine. Okay, this is presence of some kind of acid catalyst What do we get? We get this. So what do we have here? We are replacing in this reaction, we are replacing the carbon-oxygen double bond with a carbon-nitrogen double bond. And this type of molecule we refer to, we call this an amine. Okay. Same reaction we could have with an aldehyde. We take a primary amine reacting with the carbonyl of a <coughs> phenaldehyde. In essence, what do we do? We replace the the carbon oxygen double bond. This here we replace with a carbon nitrogen double bond. And that's this type of molecule we refer to as we call a amine. Now if we take a second the amine so we, go, we are going to call this number six. Addition of a secondary amine to give what we call in amine in amine let's take our cyclohexanol again I mean our uh, acetophenone and this time we take a secondary amine You notice in the secondary amine, the nitrogen is attached to two carbon atoms, two alkyl groups, also in the presence of some acid catalyst. What we get here is this molecule.
Notice what we have here. We now have the nitrogen attached to a carbon-carbon double bond. Okay, it's almost as though you have a vinyl amine. This group here, very often referred to as a vinyl group, right here. Okay, so what we have here, we have a vinyl amine, and this vinyl amine will give the name in amine. So we call this an in amine. In amine means that we have a carbon carbon double bond and an amine in the same molecule. Okay, when we get to chapter 22, both the amine and the in amine, we are going to find them useful, some of the work we are going to do in those chapters. Okay, now, supposing I have this, supposing I have this, and I have this, What will be the product of this reaction? Okay. What will be the product of this reaction? Keep in mind we are going to form an enamine in which the nitrogen now will be attached to a carbon carbon double bond. So the question I want to ask you is this let us number this one, two, three, four, five, six. We know we are going to form a carbon carbon double bond. Where would the carbon carbon double bond be in the product uh, based on the starting material? Between one and two, very good. Excellent. So you are going to form this. And then your carbon carbon double bond will be here. And that is an in amine. Okay. Okay, so if you add a primary uh, amine to carbonyl of ketone or aldehyde, you form an amine. On the other hand, if you add a secondary amine, you get an in amine. Okay, number seven. Go back. Yes. Huh? Why? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, that has to do with the reaction mechanism. Uh, I think you come and see me. Uh, me. Come and see me after class uh, for that. Okay, we are really, uh, that's a, like I, I said, this is a good question because it does, uh, you have to understand the reaction mechanism to, to see why that is the case. Okay. But I've, at least for now, I, I want you to know that if you react the secondary amine with a carbonyl of a ketone or aldehyde, you will get the uh, in amine. Okay. okay. Now, if you, okay, this is seven. Okay, addition of hydroxylamine to give what we call oxygen. Okay. If I have this, let us use acetophenone again as our example.
and I take this molecule here this is called hydroxylamine of course you use just as in the case of the amine this molecule here will behave as if it is an amine also you need catalytic amount of uh, acid what do you get? You get this. Very similar to what you get with the, in the case of the, the amine, or primary amine. <coughs> okay, but now we call this an oxide. Instead of calling this an amine, we call this oxide. Okay, so addition of this reagent, therefore, to the carbon oxygen double bond of a ketone or aldehyde, what it gives you is an oxide. H. Addition of. Hydrazine to give hydrazone I take let us use cyclohexanon And I take this molecule here, we call this hydrazine. Presence of catalytic amount of acid. Okay, the reaction will be similar to what we got in the case of the amine. So any one of these amino group will be behaving as an amine. So we are going to form the carbon nitrogen double bond. In this case, the product that we get we refer to as an hydrazone. Indeed, <coughs> this reaction, even though I have not given you the mechanism, in a similar reaction, we could use this, the hydrazine reaction, to convert a carbon-oxygen double bond to a CA2 group. Okay, so let us say here, I call this nine. <coughs> reduction, even though it starts off as a addition reaction, the, uh, the next process is the reduction of the carbon-oxygen double bond to ACA2. Reduction of carbon-oxygen double bond of aldehyde and ketone to CH2. Using hydrazine in basic medium. And this reaction we refer to as a Wolf Kirchner reaction. Okay, so if we do this, if we start with this, this applies to any aldehyde carbonyl or ketone carbonyl. Take acetophenone again.
We take hydrazine. This time, in, instead of using this in uh, catalytic uh, acid uh, catalysis, we use this under basic condition. It's a very useful reaction indeed. Okay, so this is one of those reactions that come in very handy. Okay. You see here, this reagent, what this reagent will do is to transform the carbonyl of a ketone or an aldehyde to a CA2. For example, we could take this. Do the wolf kitchen reaction. Cyclohexanone, end up with cyclohexane. So this is a very useful reaction indeed. See what is, what is done here, this carbonyl becomes a CH2. Okay. What time do we have? Seven. Oh, okay. Oh, plenty of time. Okay. Okay, now, <coughs> supposing we have a conjugated system. So let us call this 10. Addition to addition to alpha beta unsaturated ketones and aldehydes. What do we mean by that? If you have this alpha beta Related to this carbonyl here, this here we call this the alpha carbon and we call this the beta carbon. Okay? So that is why we call this alpha beta unsaturated, in this case ketone. As you can see here, this is a conjugated system based on what we did in chapter 14. Now, if you take this conjugated system, conjugated uh, uh, aldehyde or ketone, if you recall, we could write resonance structure for this. Move this electron to here. It'll be consistent with my arrow. This pile electron will move to here, and this here we could move to here. We could get this. Notice now the, the positive charge is now on the beta carbon. Now what that means is that beta carbon could now be your electrophilic carbon instead of the instead of the uh, the carbonyl carbon. So If, for example, you take a Gilman reagent, take a Gilman reagent,
step one, and then step two, hydronium ion. What is going to happen? The Gilman reagent will attack the carbon, the, uh, the beta carbon. So this is the product you are going to get. So what have we done here? We've added, instead of attacking the carbonic carbon, we attack the beta carbon. And then when we add the dilute acid, we protonate this carbon here. On the other hand, if you take a Grignard reagent, if you take a Grignard reagent, the same starting material, Step one, and then step two. The Grignard re reagent prefers to attack the carbonyl carbon, okay, in a one-two addition. In the case of the Gilman reagent, this is Gilman reagent here. The product you get here is a one-four addition. If you recall when we did this in chapter 14, but in the case of the uh, green yard agent, you get a 1 2 addition. And the double bond is still here. Okay? So, <coughs> so if you want, to introduce an alkyl group in the beta position, you use the Gilman reagent. But if you want the one two addition, you use the you use the Grignard reagent. Of course, at this point, you could now use the Wolf Kirchner reagent here. To now transform this here to this. So if you have to go from this compound here to here, okay, what do you do? You start with the uh, Gilman reagent, then you do the Wolf Kirchner reaction, you get your methyl cyclohexane. Now, other nucleophiles will also attack the beta carbon. Indeed, only the, uh, of all the nucleophiles that we have given you so far, only the green yard will, at, will do a one two addition when you have a conjugated system. The other nucleophile will do a one four addition. For example, If I have this, and I have an amine, the amine will attack this carbon here. Okay, in this case, in essence, we are adding, attacking this beta carbon and then, of course, hydrogen goes to here. The same thing with cyanide. Want to add the cyanide. <coughs> okay, the cyanide will attack this carbon here. What happens, of course, you see this here. I 
that goes here, and this the pi electron comes here. Okay, so you get this intermediate. And now when you add the acid, the acid will protonate the alpha carbon. Okay, and at this point I believe we've covered most of chapter 19. And when we come back on uh, on Thursday, what we are going to do, uh, we are going to have a, a short quiz, and then after the quiz we are going to do a whole bunch of problems and uh, hopefully, yes, uh, hopefully we will have a few minutes to discuss chapter 18. Yes. Yes. Which one is that? Yes. Yes, one, two. Okay, okay. Remember when we in chapter 14, if you look at this here, we count this here, how, how many atoms are involved here? This is atom 1, atom 2, atom 3, atom 4. So when we say 1, 2, in relation to these two are, uh, oxygen and carbon here. Okay, that's what we mean by 1, 2 addition. But when we say 1, 4 addition in relation to this oxygen and this carbon. Okay, so uh, folks, I will see you on uh, Thursday, and uh, I will, what I will do, I will post this uh, webcast. There will be two that will be posted in uh, in uh, uh, Blackboard and also on YouTube. I will call them one and two. Okay. Huh? Go back, okay.